Oh, TV started streaming Assassin's Creed? He said, fuck it. Oh, Tom, you tried the demo of the JoJo's Bizarre World? Yeah, the demo in the, uh, the demo in the thing. <coughs> Try the demo, the demo on the thing. They got JoJo's Bizarre World. Yeah. Welcome to Alexandria. The ports of Alexandria were a major commercial hub, effectively connecting Egypt with the Mediterranean regions and beyond. A tremendous amount of materials and goods flowed through the city on a daily basis. The large port market was called the Emporion. It was there that merchandise was traded by the ship owners, called Nakliros. No, I like coffee. I say coffee was one person that I didn't ever feel too much about. I, I was able to like actually watch coffee. I, I could watch coffee. Also has cringy battles, but her raps. I'm cool with hustle. I'm cool with hustle. Uh The Bonnie style is weird. That one is weird. The way I never listened to Dolly. I got all I, I Dolly. Food and other artisan work streamed out of Egypt. Ceramics, glass, golden rings, and minted coinage. The local potters, using traditional Egyptian techniques, competed with those oh, yeah, from abroad, did. and the textile industry flourished. What Egypt did not produce itself was acquired through trade, using local Why resources such as wheat and papyrus. Most sought after was pine wood from Syria, iron and marble from the Greek islands, gold from Spain, and exotic fruits from Europe. All this commercial activity contributed <laughs> to the already decadent wealth of the city. <laughs> I want to get louder. The wood imported to Port Mariotis through Alexandria's seaward ports was used in the nearby shipyards, where most of Egypt's ships were built. Employing tens of thousands of shipbuilders, the shipyards contributed to establishing the Egyptian fleet as one of the mightiest of the era. Any wood not used in shipbuilding in was further disseminated through Egypt for various purposes. Mac, you in the too? No, I'm in the game. I'm gonna come back outside. Yeah. Yeah, after after y'all after y'all game, but you know I'm I'm, I'm, coming outside. I'm, I'm gonna come out I'm gonna play wrestling. <laughs> The southern port of Lake Mariotis was the biggest in Alexandria. Save for a branch angling westward, the lake's size in the Ptolemaic era was roughly 40 to 50 kilometers from north to south. Its waters were maintained by a steady runoff from that the Nile. Shit crazy. That sound, sound in crazy. addition to the lake, a man made canal was created to assist in the transfer of goods from the city <laughs> to the port using barges. Though it is not represented in the game, Due to its size. There's interference on your list call ahead. Banking was one of the most distinctive innovations brought by the Greeks to Egypt. The centerpiece of Alexandria's wealth uh, was the royal systematization of probably, taxes on a, almost a everything. Under the bed. Basic items such as salt, mm -hmm. oil, the baby beer, under the bed. wheat, and linen were heavily taxed. Oh, TV, no As a result, the royal right. treasury of Alexandria like was able to ensure one. the economic stability of most of the administrative areas of Egypt. That's fine. 
Não sei se é mamã. By the late 12th century, the channel feeding the lake from the Nile silted up. Lake Mariotis lost its connection to the Mediterranean, as well as most of its water, as the lake slowly evaporated to a fraction of its former size. In modern times, Lake Mariotis is being kept alive through irrigation. However, only about 17% of its original size remains. Seventeen percent, that's great. Did the wrong thing. But we're gonna play Michael Jordan, mama. You can play a story, mama. Oh, I'm still inside the wreck. Welcome to Alexandria, city of celebration. Like most Greek cities, Alexandria offered multiple forms of entertainment. Most were related to cults, religious practices, and the festivities surrounding those practices. Among those festivities, the most important ones were the dynastic celebrations, instituted in honor of the deified Ptolemaic kings and queens. These celebrations could go on for many days and included sacrifices, offerings, processions, Look, and Mama. public banquets. Look at the TV, Mama. Games and competitions were organized whenever possible in locations such as the stadium, the hippodrome, and the gymnasium. The residents of Alexandria favored such events where athletes, poets, and musicians from Egypt and other cities of the Greek world competed. Hey, 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 get it, get it, get it, get it, get it. I need some Dr. Dre in your system. Like all good Boss. Greek cities, Alexandria had Boss. a theater. The architecture of this structure is Roman in style. This is because the team duplicated a theater from Cyrene. Roman theaters were usually semicircular and built from scratch on a flat area with structures designed to enhance oration. Greek theaters were more oblong in shape, similar to a horseshoe, and favored the slopes of natural hills to support their acoustics. Hey, boss. Hey, boss. Lay down. Love you, Mama. Love you, Mama. Hey, boss. At the theater, one could witness the plays oh. of contemporary comic and tragic authors. Oh. The play you are witnessing below you, is Menander's Discolos, more commonly known as The Grouch, you, a late and popular entry in the Greek comedies. 
Oh, what was the battle? I told her she is three times already. <laughs> That's not uh, forgot it. Forget him all the Patrick, you ain't that fire. He a bitch. Come on, Jordan. Boy, for heavy. That's what we plan to get. We play a little North Carolina game. Welcome to Education in Alexandria. The education of young Alexandrians did not differ from the one generally dispensed elsewhere in ancient Greece. At the age of seven, the child was taken in charge by a tutor, who then became responsible for instilling an elementary education, as well as good moral principles. Michael Jordan. Teaching was generally done outside, in the open air. In the gymnasium, students were taught not only sports, but also topics such as rhetoric, philosophy, music, and poetry, all things deemed essential to one's education at the time. Here, both girls and boys are shown attending a class given by one of the rhetoricians of the era. The team made the choice to show both genders attending class within the context of the game world. Even though it is historically inaccurate, the team felt it was not necessary to prioritize historical sexism over inclusive gameplay. <laughs> They're in New Orleans for this. Welcome to the Great Library of Alexandria. Near the district of royal palaces and within the Moseon was the most famous library of all antiquity. The Library of Alexandria was built to house all of human knowledge. Make sure y'all let me know At its pinnacle, it. the library was believed to contain over 700,000 parchments. Throughout the centuries, fires and wars between Christianity and paganism destroyed the library, leaving nothing behind. The loss of the building, and more importantly, its vast collection, is immeasurable. As no descriptions are available, the team's rendition hey, of the Library of Alexandria was inspired pee? by the visuals of the Library of Chalcis at pee? Ephesus. Okay, let me take a peek. Come in, there, boss. Let's go pee. Hmm. Interesting. <laughs> Interesting. 
While much of the collection was purchased at the government's expense, the library also obtained books through other means. Any books owned by travelers coming through the city were seized to be copied for the library. The copy would then be returned to the owner and the original entered into the library's collection. Alexandria offered unrivaled intellectual and cultural attractions. Eminent scholars from Athens, Rhodes, and other Greek centers traveled to the city to learn and engage with other free thinkers. Both the Moseon and the library were at the center of groundbreaking ideas and creative expression. The great minds of antiquity were usually well versed in many disciplines, which were often associated to specific schools of thought. The Peripatetics, the Stoics, and the Cynics were among the most well known schools of the time. It is clear that Alexandria lived up to its fundamental role as a city for intellectuals, nurturing many great minds whose impact reverberates through our modern world. Hypatia of Alexandria was a Greek mathematician, philosopher, astronomer, and inventor. Though born in Greece, she eventually migrated to Alexandria, like many great minds of the time. It is there that she became the head of the Neoplatonist school of Alexandria. From most accounts, she was highly respected by her fellow Alexandrians, both as a teacher and a philosopher. With her death, the age of great ancient scientific discoveries yeah, came to an end. Yesterday. Yeah, Callimachus was born in Cyrene and educated in Athens. After his studies, he moved to Alexandria to work in the great library. A poet and a critic, he strongly rejected the epic format of Homeric poems and instead fervently supported a shorter, more judiciously formulated style of poetry. His epigrams and elegiac poems were emulated by later poets. His work was extremely popular, second only to Homer's own works. <laughs> Ah, let's go. It was in Alexandria that mathematician Euclid, the father of geometry, wrote the elements, laying out the foundational work of what would become modern algebra and number theory. Michael Euclidean geometry would become Michael one of the most influential systems in the evolution of mathematics. How do you calculate the circumference of the Earth? With a camel, two sticks, and shadows cast by the sun. This is what Eratosthenes of Cyrene described in his principal work, Geography, while he was director of the Great Library of Alexandria. He is credited for the invention of the armillary spear around 250 BCE. The earliest known and most complete armillary sphere of antiquity was the Meteoroscopion of Alexandria, with an imposing nine rings compared to the three or four of most other astrolabes. Known as the Zodiac Krikatoi amongst the Greeks, 
the Meteoroscopion was used to determine the location of celestial bodies around the Earth. Every self-respecting astronomer of antiquity would have sought to use this tool to better understand the celestial movements. Jordan had James Worthy on his team? Pythagoras of Samos was a well-known and respected philosopher and mathematician. He is best known for the Pythagorean theorem. However, there is proof that the theorem existed in Babylonia and India long before Pythagoras was born, casting some doubts as to who exactly originated the theorem. the Moseon of Alexandria. The Moseon was a sector of the city commissioned by Ptolemy I to rival no. Athens Academy as an institute of intellectual pursuit. No. Dedicated to the nine inspiring muses, the Moseon became a great center for philosophical and scientific enlightenment. It welcomed scholars from many kingdoms, inviting them to share knowledge in literature, science, and geography. The Moseon was designed so that its buildings and grounds would accommodate free thinking, debate, and presentation. Meeting spaces and theaters surrounded a main courtyard. Expansive gardens were filled with exotic plants that aided in the study and supply of herbs and medicines. A zoo offered the study of animal behavior and physiology. Also among the Moseon's many star attractions was its astronomical observatory. Herophilus was a physician who lived most of his life in Alexandria. He was able to perform the dissection of human cadavers on a large scale due to the permissiveness of the city in such matters. Among many other discoveries, he learned that the brain was central to the human nervous system. He also extensively mapped the blood system and measured the pulse with the aid of a water clock. It is reported that in his thirst to understand human anatomy, he performed 600 vivisections on live prisoners. Oh my god! How the fuck am I supposed to get nine rebounds with Michael Jordan? In order to be free to pursue their research, Scholars were fed and housed at the Moseon at the government's expense. This freedom 
provided Alexandria scholars a meeting space for intellectual pursuits and a haven for spiritual peace. Though nothing remains of the original Moseon, it lives on as the legacy of our modern museums. Oh my God! Welcome to the Serapian of Alexandria. In a city of numerous magnificent attractions, the Serapian was considered to be the most beautiful temple of Alexandria. Located southwest of the city on a small hill known as the Acropolis, the sanctuary was constructed during the reign of Ptolemy III upon foundations which had existed since the reign of Ptolemy I Soter. Visitors of the Serapian climbed a hundred steps to reach the courtyard. Libraries were installed in the porticos surrounding the square building, with its roof and columns adorned with gold and gilded bronze. Pharaohs were generous to the temple, as were several Roman emperors after Egypt's conquest. An inner temple housed the statue of Serapis, dedicated to healing the sick. And he still got his own rebound. Why are they so overpowered? Oh. I'm not even gonna get nine rebounds. I wasn't even playing the full time. Yeah. Oh, Since the 26th dynasty, Greeks in Egypt had gradually integrated the Egyptian cult of the Apis bull to their own rituals. With the establishment of the Ptolemaic dynasty, the cult of Apis was further integrated into Greek religion. During his rule, Ptolemy I chose to merge Egyptian and Hellenic gods into a syncretic divinity named Serapis. This name was the result of the amalgamation of Osiris and Apis. With this new deity, the Ptolemaic dynasty managed to accommodate similar belief sets for two different cultures, bringing about a new dynastic cult. Mm. 
Serapis was also associated to other deities, including Asclepius, a Greek god of healing. It is possible that, as with the Serapis Temple of Canopus, the sick would visit this sanctuary, sleeping there overnight in the hopes of being healed within its hallowed halls. Welcome to the Islands of Ferris. The Heptastadion was a bridge-like causeway connecting the island of Ferris to mainland Alexandria. Its name is based on the Greek terms of measurement, hepta, meaning seven, and stadion, which is a measure of length of roughly 180 meters. Since its construction would separate the Grand Port to the east and the Port of Eunostos to the west, it was designed with channels at each end. These openings allowed passage from one port to the other. Along with creating separate harbors for the commercial and military shipping, the causeway served as a main aqueduct for the island's inhabitants. Its presence also helped protect the island and its ports from rough wind and sea currents. At the end of antiquity, the Heptastadion disappeared under layers of silt and soil, which formed an important sedimentary deposit. While the Serapion was the most celebrated of the temples in Alexandria, many other temples were built within the city. Most of these structures have been completely erased over time, and there is no way to discern how many existed. However, research of ancient papyri offered tantalizing hints as to the possible location of at least some of the temples. Keep this here. <laughs> Both papyri and coins reveal evidence of many temples built for the gods. Poseidon, the god of the sea, likely had an edifice in his honor west of this island, as well as on the mainland. This temple next to you is dedicated to Iset Feria, the divine protector of the lighthouse. This location hosted annual celebrations in the month of April, known as the Sacrum Feria, in connection to the lighthouse. In her incarnation as Iset Fortuna, the goddess done? carries a rudder and a cornucopia, both symbols of good luck for navigators. I wasn't upstairs. Considered one of the seven wonders of the ancient world, the Lighthouse of Alexandria was a source of great pride for the inhabitants of the city. Construction began under Ptolemy I's reign and lasted 15 years. It was completed during his son's rule. 
Once completed, the lighthouse was dedicated to the gods for the salvation of those who sail the sea. Maybe you want to send me an, uh, an invite, Hemi? Because I think I'm in your world. Built on the island of Ferris, the stone structure was three tiers set on top of one another in a step formation. The second floor consisted of an octagonal tower and the top floor was a cylindrical tower topped by a statue. The interior provided space for staff rooms and a ramp which allowed the transport of fuel to the upper floors. Essential to safe navigation through the rifts and shallow waters, the Ferris was a functioning lighthouse with a beam reportedly visible 50 kilometers away. It's unclear what kind of fuel was yeah, used cool. or how much. Any other details of how the light worked remain a mystery. Yes, sir. For several centuries, the Ferris was one of the highest monuments ever built by man. It measured roughly 110 meters in height, compared to the Pyramid of Giza, which was around 140 meters I'm still, high. I'm still in my game, y'all. Gradually, the structure was eroded by earthquakes, and then completely destroyed in 1480 CE, when a fort was built over it. Archaeological excavations on the seabed have uncovered many blocks from the ancient building. I'm a yours piece, that looks really good. I've been since mama gets square cut. Mama looks so nice when you did. You guys play that thing about Thomas Mount getting emasculated. I want to start that website. Welcome to the Panaean. The Panaean was a temple built in honor of the god Pan, divinity of nature. This Greek god, often represented as a half man, half goat, with a beard, horns, and goat's hooves, was considered the protector of shepherds and herds. Pan's attribute was his namesake musical instrument, the Pan flute. His temples were usually located in caves and on high mountains and were frequented by shepherds. It is likely that Mediterranean cults adopted the imagery of Pan to symbolize the Christian devil. To give proper honor to the god, Alexandrians built an artificial hill upon which they housed his temple to compensate for the flat relief of the city. What? The artificial mound had the shape of a spinning top or a pine cone, which was accessed by a spiral staircase. The yeah. Only such heights would be fitting for a mountain god. Really cheese steak and barbecue? Mm. That's one. Welcome to the Hippodrome of Alexandria. The main Hippodrome of the city was called the Legaeon, 
in okay. honor of Lagos, the ancestor of the Ptolemies. Alexandrians were great lovers of horse racing. They were fascinated by the rivalry of these races. The Agon, as it was said at that time, mm -hmm. that every competition brought. It was a struggle for glory. Mm -hmm. Uh, butterfly. The most important chariot race was the Tethrapon. Using four horses with the quickest harness to the front right, the charioteer would race for 12 laps with sharp turns at either end of the hippodrome. The victors Nobody's were crowned with garlands of olive and received prize money, but the most sought after reward was to be acclaimed by the works of poets, such as Callimachus and <laughs> Pinder. That's that. That'll be the end of the chapters for Alexandria. Alexandria. Oh, you're playing the Roman one, TV? Ye hymns the, that uh, rule the, the lyre, in, uh, what god, what hero, I, and Egypt. what man shall we loudly praise? Verily Zeus is the lord of Pisa, and Heracles established the Olympic festival. While Theron must be proclaimed by reason of his victorious chariot with its four horses, Theron, who is just in his regard for guests, and who is the bulwark of Akragas, the choicest flower of an auspicious line of sires, whose city towers on high, bringing wealth and glory to crown their native merits. Mm -hmm.